So I guess I should talk about what I've been up to this week. I have actually done a few more dog jackets. As I said, I'm already doing some pyjamas. So I've been repeating some uh, projects that I've already done. So I'm not going to do full in-depth videos about them because they are, you've already seen a little bit of about them. And if you want more details, you can always comment and, and I'll let you know. But I did make my sister's dog a couple of jumpers that were from fabrics that were too small to make my dog anything out of or were left over from making my dog ones. So I have already given her two of the three that I made so I will just pop a picture here of them and you can see them. Um, but I also made her this little one. I haven't quite finished it yet but it has, it has a waterproof outing outer and a fluffy inside. I think they call it shelled polar fleece, the fabric that I used. Because um, she's a bit small, I haven't done too many details on it. So all I've got to do now is there's um, some Velcro on the front and then the ends pulled in and that's all ready to go. So that's pretty cool. I think she'll be happy about that. Uh, she is getting really cold this season. My, sister, my sister's dog is getting really cold this season. Uh, she's quite little and I thought a couple of jumpers might be a good idea. The other thing that I've, I've started a new project, let me just grab that. So I've started a new knitting project. It is going to make a beanie. Um, this has been really interesting because I am... I've knitted for a while, but I've always been a beginner knitter because I kind of like knit for ages and then stop knitting. So I never really go past beginner. So although this is still a beginner pattern, I've decided with this one I'm going to learn to knit properly. Um, being that I'm left-handed, trying to watch my mum knit and or my mum trying to teach me to knit has been quite a difficult process. And um, so I've obviously looked at books and tried to figure it out, kind of got the idea of it, but it turns out I've always been knitting quite slightly wrong. Um, I used to knit to the back of the stitch, so in this last year I fixed that and now I've learned to knit to the front of the stitch. But then this time around I wanted to learn how to do the continental knitting so I don't have to keep moving my string around because... I'm not that fast, continental is supposed to be faster, so I want to learn it properly now. But also, I want to learn to crochet later in the year. And I feel that if I learn to continental knit, that crocheting will become easier because you have to be able to hold your string in the right place to be able to crochet properly. Otherwise, it's very slow and tedious and it, again, can be quite challenging. So. That is the current plan, is to learn to knit continental, but left-handed. Um, I did the last couple of rows that way, and it's going pretty good. I'm pretty happy with getting better of the flow. The first couple of rows of doing it was disastrous, but and took me forever. But that's okay. You know, you can only get faster. As they say, the people have been, I've been watching have said, you know, get the skill down first and then worry about the speed later. So, hopefully next time you see this project it will be a beanie. Um, and hopefully it will fit my niece. Because she loves purples, so that's why I'm doing that one. And then, the last other thing that we've been doing quite a bit this last week and last week is we picked up a camera. Um, I'll show you it. So, this is... Uh, DJI camera. It's an older camera. It's probably about six years old, but it's one of those sports cameras and thought it could be fun to try and do some filming on it. And so I've been playing with it, but we picked it up cheap because it wasn't going. So first thing first, we figured, well, let's charge it. Realized it had no charger. So we've bought a charger and some extra batteries because we found them a really good deal on them. Charged it up, plugged it in, and it works perfectly fine. So we're pretty happy with that, but that means we've had to play with it, watch tons of YouTube videos on it um, to try and figure out how to use it. Have 
basically at this stage just played around the house with just filming ourselves and pressing the buttons and seeing what all the buttons do. But hopefully the next journey can be taking it out and giving it a go. So for those who are going, what on earth is that? That looks peculiar. Sorry, so basically it's a sports camera, one of your, you know, kind of like your, what same ones that you get in your drones and that you get with um, GoPros and stuff like that. So that kind of style of camera and then it's on the gimbal and a gimbal allows it to rotate in all different directions and keeps your footage smoother and stuff like that. The other thing that this is supposed to be able to do is be able to follow me action. So I thought it kind of could be fun to work with my vlogging. Could get it to, when I'm moving around the house, a little bit more around the table, but more maybe it will follow me. Don't know how to do that yet. Don't know if it does do it. We'll find out. Um, but yeah, kind of, you know, as you know, I'm trying to get back into photography. So it's kind of cool to have a new toy to play with to do that. So still watching tons of videos on that. Still trying to figure it out, but pretty, yeah, it's going to be fun. Alright, so I got this fabric out because I wanted to make a few more pairs of pyjamas. But as I've laid on the table, I've noticed that there's some pink splotches on it. Which makes me think that the red here is going to run. So the first thing I'm actually going to do is wash it in some hot salt water to try and fix any dye that is running. Alright, so I've got my hot soda water in the sink. Um, I haven't put too much in yet because I don't really know how much space there's going to be in the sink because it's a reasonable amount of fabric. I think I've got like two and a half, three metres of fabric here to fit in. So hopefully that's right. Um, yeah, just shoved some salt in there and I'm going to put it in and let it soak for a bit. <laughs> Take a bit to get the fabric to sit down. Um, I guess I'll leave it to soak in here for a few a couple of hours. I don't really know. I, you know. I've just heard that this can help. And then I will put it in the wash and dryer as I would normally use the you know wash and dry the fabric. And hopefully that will help lock the colour in a little bit. I could be just being paranoid and that might not be leaking at all, but and I could be just seeing things. Um, I don't know, do you pre-wash your fabrics? I don't. And as a general, I don't tend to pre-wash fabrics, um, mainly because I'm already inspired and I just want to get it going and do it. But, you know, I have heard that there are some people who pre-wash their fabrics as soon as they buy them, so then they are ready when they're inspired. Um, yeah, it'd be interesting to know if you have any comments on that or if you know any other YouTubers and their opinions and thoughts on it. salt. I don't really know if there's, if there's a ratio. So, so if, you know, if you know a ratio, how it's supposed to be done properly, let me know. I guess we'll let that soak for a bit. I'll come in and give it a bit of a mix up every no, 15 20 minutes, and then after a couple of hours, I will put it in the washing machine, wash it, and dry it. So, after soaking the fabric, I have washed and dried it. Um, I don't know if you can visually see the difference, but the pink spots have uh, lightened almost disappeared. There's still a little bit of bleeding around the red monster, but nothing else has sort of come off in colour wise. So I'm pretty happy with that. I know it took a little bit longer and was probably an unnecessary step, but I'm glad that I did it. 
so that I now know that there's not going to be any color leakage on anything. All right, so a couple of days ago, I showed you some projects that I had been working on that I hadn't done a full video because of the fact that the projects we've done before. So I had loads of this fabric, and my nieces loved the last onesies I made. So, hence, I made another set for them. And here they are. With their... So that's the ones I've made this time. This lovely monster fabric. This fabric is so soft. It was so lovely to be working with it while it was cold. I just sort of like snuggled into it so often. Um, but yeah, I'd really... But yes, I'm really happy with how these ones turned out. So they have another one of them each. There was only enough fabric to do a onesie for them each. Not pyjama pants this time as well. But they really love the onesies the most. So I thought that was the best option to do. But there was some fabric left over and I didn't want to waste it because although it was odd shaped pieces, I knew I could get something out of that. So thought, well, what's the other thing that I use loads of? Doggy pyjamas. So this one's for my dog. I made, managed to get two for him and then two for my sister's dog. So my dog ones, I did exactly the same as the pattern straightforward nice quick and easy for my sister's dog i did change it a little bit as you can tell i haven't put the ribbing around the end she is a mix of quite a few different small breed dogs but she has this cute little tail that flicks upwards most of the time so she really doesn't want ribbing around her bottom because she's that would make her really uncomfortable for her tail but because of being a mixed breed as well she's also a little bit longer in the body so I've made the same pattern. My dog actually wears the large, even though he's only a French Bulldog. I think he's a large, small dog. I don't really know how that works. Um, to be honest, we were at the vets the other day and we weighed him in and he was 15 kilos. Eek. So um, he's actually gone on a bit of a diet this week because he's only really meant to be 13 and a half for his size. So I thought, mm, I know French Bulldogs can get big, but he's now actually getting a bit chubby. So, but anyway, that's another story. Um, my sister's dog, however, is tiny. So I used the small four around the body, and I'm pretty sure this is still probably big on her anyway. She's the tiniest thing ever. But because she's longer, I actually used the length of the medium. Yet to try this on her, but I figured if it turns out too long, it's easy enough to unpick a bit of the seam, cut it down a wee bit, and re overlock it and hem it up. So that's a nice way to just be able to make it a little bit more custom for her because, yeah, like I said, she's a different shape to my dog, but the pattern stall should work quite well. And yeah, she's just getting cold because she's getting a bit older. Like she is, she's got. She does have more fur and a little bit more fluffier than my dog, but she is getting a bit older, so she's getting cold, and also she looks better when she's been trimmed. So my sister is keeping her quite nicely trimmed, which means in the winter she does get a little bit cold. But yes, so that is the completion of the projects that I'm doing at the moment. Um, and I've already started filming for the next one, which is the toys that I'm going to make. I wanted to give that a go, but whole new video. Hopefully that one won't be too long until it's up. And you can see if I had success in making that. But I'm pretty happy with how the projects are going so far. I'm finding that I'm getting a little like, oh, what do I do next? Because I don't want to keep repeating the same ones, but it... That's why for this video I've just sort of shown you the finished product instead of um, showing you the whole process again because you've already seen that. Um, but yeah, I think I think there might be a few, might have to do some few out of the box ones next. Like I know generally most of my projects are sewing projects, um, but we do have some outdoor furniture that needs re painting and upholstering so maybe that could be something that we can do soon and being mid-year we've got a couple of Christmas stuff that we need to do early we did some lovely statues 
last year of um, toy soldiers, but we left them too late, and so the paint just didn't didn't have time to harden, and we ended up with bad weather over Christmas. So I'm hoping that we should get back into those soon and refix them up and give them time to harden off for Christmas this year. So definitely we'll bring you that video when we do it. I will show you what we did last year as well as what we're doing this year to fix them. So yeah, so those are up and coming. And so earlier in the year, you'll probably remember I did a quilt top and I had hoped to get it done by machine, but I'm just not in the position to financially pay for that, even though it would be really cool to have it done that way. So hopefully in a video soon I will be inspired and have the energy to actually quilt that up and I'll take you through that process as well. So I've definitely got a few projects that I know need doing straight away, but you know, as arty people we like to procrastinate and create start new projects, not necessarily finish old projects. But yeah, anyway, thank you for tuning in and we'll see you next time.